Hello there, I'm Peter. I love Clojure. I want to show you how easy it is to use Visual Studio Code to write your first Clojure program and how to also use it to learn a bit of uh, Clojure and, uh, and the Clojure mode of coding. I will assume that uh, you have VS Code and Java on your computer. You will not need anything else. So I have an extension called Calva installed and it has this getting started REPL and I start that it will open up three files uh, for me and uh, start the REPL and connect uh, VS, VS code to the REPL so that's done now and we can write our first closure program which of course is hello world and now I execute the program and uh, there you see hello world it's our first closure program in less than 20 seconds all right so i'll restart this i'll return to what i just showed you uh, first i want to say a few words about calva which is the next ex closure extension for vs code that i wrote so that i can keep using my favorite editor with my favorite uh, programming language uh, what Calva offers is by no means all my doing. Um, the extension sources tons of hours of open source coding from passionate Clojure toolsmiths all over the world, and it serves it to you in your favorite editor. Calva has what I need to be productive. Hopefully that is true for you as well. Most importantly, it connects this code to the Clojure Apple, enabling interactive programming, which while developing is the big thing with Clojure. Further, it formats uh, uh, Clojure code and provides uh, structural editing. It also has uh, structural syntax highlighting, including rainbow brackets and uh, rainbow vertical guides. Accessing documentation for your code is easy, uh, also for Clojure core or library code that you use. It also makes it uh, easy to navigate your source code or Closure core or, na or uh, library code or even Java methods, something which closure coders have a habit of doing. Uh, Calva also has a debugger. It provides refactorings. It lints your code. It has a test runner. It does pretty printing, etc. Calva is actively maintained by me and Brandon Range. We try to give uh, Calva users constructive and friendly support. And we get good help with this from other Calva users. Brandon and I want to make it so that if you like Visual Studio Code, then using it for Clojure and Clojure Script should be an excellent choice. You will see some Calva in action in this video, which is not about Calva, by the way, but about how to use it to try Clojure out. I think that if you are watching this, then then you are already curious about Clojure, so I will skip that selling. You already know that my heart beats for it. So, if you are, if you know that you are going to use Clojure, then uh, uh, what you do is that you, you go to the Clojure uh, site, uh, Clojure.org, and you click Get Started. You find out how to install uh, closure tools and command line tools on your computer and uh, then you find the support for your editor uh, the closure support in your editor and uh, we are of course using calva here today and then still in this mode that you're going to use it <laughs> uh, you're going to use closure then uh, what you do is you figure out how to connect uh, uh, your editor to your to uh, to your project, and Calva makes that easy uh, with a command that that we call Jackin, um, and yeah, you can read read about that here. But today we are going to just try try to closure the language out. We let's say we we we're not sure that we are going to use this uh, um, programming language just want to try it out. For that, Calva has this getting started REPL. So in the command palette, you will find it 
like you uh, just saw me doing. And that command will then open three files. One that's going to teach you the basic of how to evaluate code in Calva. And then it will also have a file teaching the basis of structural editing. We will not go into that today. But if you're going to use uh, Clojure, then you will want to uh, to read and, and do the exercises in that file. Then there is a file that uh, uh, is for uh, teaching yourself the very basics of the Clojure language. Uh, and uh, all this is, is done with the editor connected uh, to, to the Clojure REPL. So you will learn it in an interactive way. Actually, we will look at it now. So let's go here. And so what, what do you do? Then that you look for Calva here and you install it. Of course, I already have it installed. Then when it's installed, you go to the command palette. You find the getting started REPL command and you execute it. These three files open. Uh, talk about the REPL output window is open here telling us that now it's ready and we are in this hello REPL. At the bottom of hello REPL we will find this string. Uh, this is the last thing evaluated so that's what's going to be printed in the output. In closure uh, the building blocks are functions course it's a functional uh, programming language and as with any programming language you build with these small building blocks and it all composes up to to the whole uh, program but in many programming languages and environments the way to you test things are actually you restart uh, the whole program uh, maybe you try to wire it so that it quickly finds the, the place where you have changed something and so you can test that thing you have changed. In Clojure you instead you instead test these small things as you build them. Often in the same file as where you uh, where you, 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 you build them. And then you build a bit of them, evaluate it, and you you test it, you build a bit more of it, evaluate it, test it. So that's the mode uh, you are working with. So in enclosure code, these definitions, like they are global uh, definitions in the program, they are on the top level of uh, the file. So you will see the white bracket here and the white bracket there. These are top level forms. Uh, and Calva makes it easy to, to evaluate something top level, so it's easy to define uh, something with the uh, keyboard shortcut alt enter you will find eval top top level for alt enter so with that i can evaluate uh, this function and in line calva will show you the result of the evaluation which is the var holding this defined function uh, in, this, in this case and then you can test this uh, code uh, by calling it. Let's see. Hello, hello. Uh, let me call it. Uh, of course, often you don't want to call things on the top level of your file because that will happen when you load the, the, the file. As we saw here, this was actually evaluated. So you put them instead in in uh, inside comments, uh, they are called uh, rich comments in Clojure. Uh, as a, I think Rich Hickey is known to be using them uh, a lot. And Calva knows that you are often putting these calls inside comments and wants to make it easy for you to call them. So you can put your cursor anywhere inside this form, and you also use Alt Enter, and it will evaluate. Uh, Evaluate it for you. Of course, you can greet 
try it like that instead. And then, as I said, uh, uh, what you do is like you redefine. In fact, maybe this function doesn't really do exactly what I wanted to do right now. Then I fix it and I evaluate it, test it again. So let's say I'm a boomer and I like three exclamation marks on my greetings. And then I redefine it with three exclamation marks. Then I go down here and evaluate to see that it does what I want. No, I'm not a boomer. I'm uh, I'm one that likes um, emojis and everything. So we'll put emojis and everything here. Yeah, and then we evaluate that again, and then we can try the function. Okay, maybe it's prettier with spaces on both sides like that. Right, so then now it's uh, now it's what, what I want. So and then you go on to the next uh, function and define that, and you build that the same way. Uh, as everything is expressions in in closure, and everything evaluates something. Also, when you print stuff, that also evaluates something, but it evaluates to nil. Uh, so when you evaluate this print here, uh, it. It, nil is what will be shown in line in Calva, but it will also what it did was print greet well uh, print this uh, here so that you see here that's what you see here and you also see the return value here but inside Calva you will only see the nil because that was returned. Of course, uh, definitions like function definitions and other definitions like this are not the smallest building blocks. So often you want to evaluate. Uh, smaller things inside the, the functions and Calva makes that easy with the control enter uh, uh, shortcut that evaluates the current form it's called so the current form is anything that the cursor is beside so now it's beside this string and I have control enter here it will evaluate, evaluate that string it evaluates it to itself since it's a literal evaluate this two or this one or if I evaluate this vector you see the vector printed in line here. And since this file was loaded, this definition of foo is defined to this vector. You can evaluate this foo to see that that's true. Uh, actually, something that you might uh, run into is that you evaluate something inside a string, and then Calva will think that you, you want to evaluate this three here, which is not defined. So it throws an error here, uh, syntax error, and uh, unable to resolve symbol 3 in this context, because that has not been defined. You will also find the stack trace here. If you print, uh, click this print stack trace, you can see the stack trace. And the stack trace is, if the files are like known to, to, to Calva in some way, then you will find them. If you command click them, you can navigate uh, to st things in the stack trace. So this happened in the main uh, uh, CLJ here, so it's it's part of the REPL, uh, uh, yeah, so in the REPL uh, function in the main CLJ. And this eval is the last thing that didn't work, so that happens here. So this is where this blew up. Uh, it's good to know that you can uh, find the error message here, you can print the st stack trace and, and you can examine the code that blows up. Of course, here we know it's this that blows up, so we can fix it by defining three uh, if we want, and then this will not blow up. Um, again, we're just stressing this thing that uh, you put things in, in uh, comment forms and they will still be very easy to evaluate. And this is so common in, in closure so they call rich comments really for this and you can also uh, look at the definitions for uh, uh, this is the greet function you can if you command press the command or control on windows and click you will navigate to to do it it also holds true for things in closure core so the range function is defined like this and it also is true for things in Java. 
So you can navigate into the Java code and see that the ma apps function in Java is really simple. Uh, right? Uh, it's very, very important to keep in mind that Calva will not evaluate anything for you that uh, you're not asking it uh, to evaluate. So, for, I for instance, uh, if this is like in, in co comment blocks, when you load the file, that's you telling Calva to, to evaluate the file. Then uh, everything at top level will be, will be defined and evaluated. Anything inside comments uh, will not. And uh, that's very good because here we have a um, form that if you evaluate this, it will never end because the range here is creating an infinite sequence. Uh, so if if I evaluate this, then now the REPL goes in. It keeps just running. It will not return. So if I do s something here and try to evaluate it, it looked like Calva stopped working. In a way, it hasn't because it doesn't it, you know, it reach the REPL right now, right? But there is something you can do about it. You can interrupt it. So you do interrupt running evaluations, control alt C, control alt D, control alt C, control alt D. Now you interrupted that uh, the running evaluations and then we saw that also this evaluation uh, returned with its result. That's very good to know. You can in in interrupt them. So <coughs> next thing that uh, uh, this file will try to teach you is that Calva will protect the structure of the code by default. So if, if for instance, I break the structure here, uh, now there is one parent uh, too little in this file, then also things stop stop to, this stuff doesn't seem to work anymore. Calva is, uh, is uh, totally thrown off. Actually, it's not just Calva is thrown off by this. If you evaluate this file, it will blow up because the closure reader can't read this. It's uh, it's not complete. So I will undo that. So now the structure is, is okay again. And Calva starts working. The reader is happy. Everything is good. Uh, so if you just press backspace here, it won't actually uh, delete them because it will it will protect you from from doing that. So if you do that there as well, of course you can now you can you can. Uh, uh, start deleting and stuff. Now this function will not work as you think, because I have like broken the code as such. Not the structure, but the, the code as such. Name is actually a um, thing in in uh, Closure Core, so we can call strict greet here with something. And it will print something, but it will not print what you think because. So maybe you shouldn't use uh, name actually as a, as a um, argument name here, parameter name. Now it will do what you think. Yeah, so it's good to know. And if you really want to delete something like I did, then you press Alt and backspace. But now, of course, uh, I broke the structure. But it's good to know that if you really want to delete a parent somewhere, you just use alt, alt backspace to do that. Good. Uh, let's move on. We will not go into more of power edit uh, in, in this video, but instead look at closure. Uh, and I will like this is this is a kind of a long file. Uh, it's 2,500 lines almost, and it's not even finished. Uh, uh, I think maybe it will d double the size when I have finished it. But th there is still there enough there for you to to start uh, getting your feet wet uh, with, with with closure. Uh, this uh, file starts with uh, uh, the namespace def definition. That's the NS form you see here. So it defines the namespace hello closure. And here, uh, this is how you can require things into the, uh, into the namespace to use. And you familiar things here you can require in other namespaces. 
you can uh, refer symbols inside the namespaces you can also alias them to something shorter in your file so there's no surprises uh, there really you always start with loading a file Calva again Calva will never load uh, evaluate any code unless you tell it that's an uh, important aspect of uh, of, uh, of Calva so we load the file control alt c enter it tells us now it's loaded now i can start this one starts with the first program we wrote here hello world <laughs> and again this file is like you are you are your own teacher here um, learning yourself by evaluating and experimenting with the, with the code so that's the mode we are in here a very uh, important concept of enclosure is the expressions everything is expressions i think i have already said that several times uh, there are no return uh, statements because there are no statements uh, a function uh, is defined like this uh, so this is the function last eval wins takes no arguments and it has these expressions in its um, in its body so when you if you define this function and then call it what will happen is that first this expression will be evaluated it has a side effect printing that evaluates to nil then this one will be evaluated that evaluates one then this one will be evaluated that evaluates to nil prints then this one will be evaluated and that's actually what's going to be returned so if we eval this then two is what's is returned, but also side effect one and side effect two were printed in that order. The evaluation of one just disappears. Uh, yeah. Then uh, in inclusion, these expressions uh, often are like function calls. You call a function, give it arguments. That's how it uh, that's how it works. But not everything is functions actually. Uh, closure has some special forms like that's that define closure the very primitives of closure and then we these special forms macros are are built they also define the closure language uh, and then on top of, of these macros and and, and, uh, and special forms there are functions and there are lots of functions in closure core it's very rich and but you are also when you use write functions you're also using these these fu functions in closure core the macros in closure core and the special forms in, in closure so it's just not just closure that's using this but it's important to know which is which because you use them uh, differently um, a, f a special form and macros they can't be passed uh, around uh, they are not uh, first class uh, for instance, so sometimes you get surprised uh, uh, by this because you don't know that it was a, a macro that you were uh, uh, that you were evaluating. So here, see an example here. Def is a special form uh, that uh, will define this symbol foo in the current namespace and give it uh, the value foo. So, so to speak actually it will it will give the value foo to a var that will then be def referred by this symbol here we are c calling the macro 4 which is a very powerful macro uh, which this file will tell you more about uh, but if you evaluate this you will see that it actually is a list comprehension so you have the Cartesian product here of this list and this list and here we are calling this the function string uh, uh, which concatenates its arguments so here it will concatenate okay so this file goes on then to to teach you about the literals of, of uh, the closure language uh, and they are like the, the the numbers strings things and then symbols uh, and keywords and also the the collections are actually literals uh, but let's see here the, the 
the integers here, no surprises. Uh, there they have integers and, fl and floating points, exponent uh, syntax here. Uh, you have uh, hexadecimal octal uh, arbitrary base like this. And, but you also have uh, something that you may not find in other languages uh, is ratios. Some other languages have, have them, but Clojure have them as well. Uh, you also have big decimals. Uh, you know, floating point is not always the best choice when you're doing math, <laughs> but uh, uh, big decimals are there for you. And you also have big, big integers. Uh, this is uh, very good for, for uh, um, to have it as core thing uh, in in the language because if you if you let's say we apply star on I don't know I don't know how quickly this blows up no that didn't blow up not that either there that was too big uh, so you can't uh, and if, of course if I go on here. It will be a very big uh, big um, number, but you can if you use a big big int here, then it will happily do it uh, for you. Oops. So. You see, it's very uh, powerful. You also have strings, as I said. Uh, characters look like this, enclosure literal characters. And regular expression looks like strings. So they have this hash sign in front of them. Symbols are any, any bare uh, alphanumerics and also uh, uh, many punctuation characters. Actually, anything uh, uh, can be a symbol. Well, this is the symbol map. It's just the map function in Clojure Core. This is the plus function in Clojure Core. This is the plus function in Clojure Core namespace. You can specify it like that if you need. Nil is um, uh, the null value. It's called nil in, in this for traditional reasons. Uh, and then you have the booleans, false and true. In closure, the only falsey things are false and nil. Everything else is truthy in closure. Uh, keywords are uh, super important concept. They can also be namespaced, and this is a syntax for namespacing it in the current namespace. That's very important because keywords are global uh, in your closure uh, program so this alpha uh, keyword here if i would uh, define it uh, reference alpha here i will actually be referring to the same uh, alpha so here if i refer to the greet function here look at it that's uh, that's this discrete function but if I look at it here then it's not defined because it's n it's it's not global like that um, so th that's uh, important to know about uh, them but then if you you want to have a local keyword to the to the namespace it's you do it's a double colon there for, uh, for using them Keywords are super important in uh, in Clojure. You see them everywhere. Uh, if you have been coding in Ruby, maybe you recognize uh, uh, what they represent. You can index a map on anything, but but very often the key the, uh, the keyword is the right thing to use because they are the look lookup of them is really really fast because they have this identity be between them. So everywhere you, you use them, they are always identical. Even if you define them uh, like this, the f this function, keyword function, it will create a keyword uh, from it. So if you validate it, it will create the keyword foo. 
and that will be identical to that literal keyword foo. Uh, so that's a guarantee you have uh, from Clojure. You have strings, they can be um, multi line. Um, and then let's see. Yeah, namespaces. This uh, file, maybe I should stop uh, this now. I promise I wouldn't teach you how to fish here. Uh, this is uh, the fishing pond. Uh, and Calva is your fishing gear here. Uh, uh, anyway, this uh, file will tell you about namespaces. Uh, it will tell you about the collections. Maybe I should at, at least say something about the collections. First, uh, uh, they are super Im important in, in Clojure. You do most things uh, uh, with collections. Actually, you do most things with hash maps. <laughs> uh, but uh, you also use sets and, and vectors. So this is a, a, co a collection, a literal list. It's quoted here because a function in uh, in Clojure is also a list, and Clojure without this quote here, Clojure will try to call one as if it was a function, but it is not. So that's what you do. Vectors are like arrays, so very fast uh, index lookup in them, and uh, sets. Uh, yeah, they look look like that. Of course, you see the order of them is arbitrary. Maps looks like that, and as I said, they can be indexed on anything. So here we have a map with the key uh, keyword A as the first key uh, to one, keyword B to two. This is the key two, and that points to three. So that's what happens uh, there. These uh, collections compose. So here we have a map, keyword foo, indexing the vector onto. Looks a bit like um, maybe JavaScript is a good uh, way no, comparison uh, to, to what you do here. So here you have a set of one and two to the bar. But then, of course, you can put anything in the set. Yeah. Yeah, and this uh, file also first gives you a bit of a look at functions. It has a deeper look at functions uh, further down, but to understand the rest of the file is good to have this first uh, look at them. Uh, as I said, they can be, uh, they are often using punctuation to, to name them, so it's, they are pretty um, easy to find uh, function names when you do it. And uh, it goes on here to tell you about special forms. Now I'll just show you the rest of this file, uh, like this. Special forms, super important thing. Uh, the reader uh, is a super important thing. So the re reader is uh, the program uh, that reads uh, your Clojure code and turns it into data that it gives to the Clojure compiler that then evaluates the code. And then you get it back. So that, that's what's happening in this REPL, the read eval print loop. It's very important to know uh, about this reader and how it reads your, your code. So in this short section here, since the syntax is pretty simple in Clojure, it's not as simple as in some list, but it's still pretty simple. I will tell you almost everything about the reader in this short section here. So when you have read that, then you can actually read uh, closure code like the reader does and that's very good and tell you about macros here as I said we go a bit deeper into the for macro and you will find yeah of course flow control what would you do without flow control here deeper dive into functions as I promised and then of course, higher order functions, very important concept in, in, in Clojure, as it is in many other functional programming languages, as a uh, thing we touch here. Uh, and we go spe especially into the, the higher order functions like map and reduce. And 
of course, uh, the mandatory rant about immutability. It's a big thing in, um, in Clojure. And I would like to say that, yeah, uh, so if you want to look at one, uh, one thing that could inspire you into uh, why immutability is a really, really nice thing, it's a video by, by Rafael Dittwald uh, on Clojure. I, will, uh, I think I can show you the, uh, the link to it. But anyway, uh, immutability is, of course, very important in, in Clojure also transforming data structures uh, even if you can't mutate them uh, you actually create uh, uh, new copies of them very efficiently but still you create like new you never mutate uh, um, one of these uh, data structures there are like reference types uh, that can help you have mut uh, a mutable state a very controlled and very thread safe as well, but usually you just um, manipulate uh, these uh, uh, literal or these de data structures, and you, you will always get a new copy uh, of them, which you then uh, uh, hand on. So here is a um, let's see if we can I can show you that quickly maybe. Um, yeah, so here we are defining a map. So I will define that one. And where was it? So here is the. Uh, never mind if you don't understand the syntax here, but this is thread macro. So if I if I evaluate this control Alt and then Enter, will evaluate the thread until this. So you can look at what's happened here. Is that? You are mani manipulating this exit haunted and always getting a new copy. So you see it here that it grows and changes. And now I remove name from it. So I had name there, this no name here. And I update it, giving the log. And I add something <laughs> to the log. That was wrong. Yeah, uh, so I'll add something more to the, to, uh, to the log. So this is a very common uh, pattern you see in, in closure programs uh, that you have a collection and then you, you just massage it. Um, yeah, and that's actually how far this uh, uh, closure tutorial takes you. Uh, it doesn't even go into the super important uh, sequence abstractions and super important laziness and stuff like that. But I promise I will finish it. Um, yeah, so I think that uh, concludes uh, uh, the um, look into how you lo <coughs> learn more about Clojure. That's why you do it. You use this getting started uh, REPL and you um, uh, go through uh, these files and evaluate things, experiment. Um, I hope uh, you will do it and um, uh, that you will let me know if you do it. Uh, uh, if you uh, are interested in learning more about Clojure, as I said, the Clojure uh, org site is the go-to place. Uh, if you have questions, this ask.clojure.org where you go. Uh, there is also this Clojureverse forum that I can highly recommend. Uh, and the Clusurian Slack is very, very active. And that's also where you will find the Calva channel. And you will find me and Brandon uh, trying to, to, uh, to help you and other Calva users trying to help each other. So it's a very active and very, very nice community, I would say. Uh, also, the, uh, the, the Slashar Closure subreddit is super nice. Uh, if you want to. I want to end with this actually. If, if you want to get really, really excited uh, 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 about uh, uh, the closure, uh, I recommend this video by Rafael Dittwald uh, showing you the closure way. But he's using, he's actually using uh, JavaScript um, uh, when he does it. So you, you can learn the closure way and get excited about it. 
uh, without having to worry about uh, s uh, syntax and stuff like that. Uh, that's different in Clojure. I can, can't recommend this video enough. Just, uh, just watch it. Yeah, I think that's, uh, uh, that's it for now. I really hope you're going to try out Clojure and, and by all means um, uh, do it with uh, Calva if you're a VS Code uh, user. Thank you. Happy coding.